Hi, welcome back to the Review Crew. I'm Truman. And I'm Cameron, and today we're going to be reviewing Black Adam. Roman and Dylan are on the spot reviewing Freddy vs. Jason. Let's take a look at the trailer for Black Adam. My son sacrificed his life to save me. These powers are not a gift, but a curse. Born out of rage. This loose cannon needs to be locked down before innocent people start getting hurt. He's been asleep for 5,000 years. You find us a cell that can hold him, we'll take care of the rest. Who's on the team? I didn't bring a passport. We don't need passports. We're the Justice Society. There's a war going on outside. We ain't safe from Black Adam. We're here to negotiate your peaceful surrender. Heard about at least three killings this afternoon. I'm not peaceful. Nor do I surrender. Here we go. I kneel before no one. You didn't come here to seek justice. You came to exact revenge. Too much enemy fire to catch I never said I was a hero. Giving you respect, I expect the same thing. You believe you are not worthy. But fate does not make mistakes. You have two paths. You can be the destroyer of this world. Or you can be its savior. So Truman, what'd you think of Black Adam? I thought it was great. I'll tell you, it was it was fun, it was a good time. There were some flaws, but you know, I had a positive experience watching this film. Yeah, me too. Um, I thought it was a fun movie to watch, better than most DC movies. DC has been pick, like picking up as time goes by besides um, movies like, like the second Wonder Woman, but I think they've been putting, they do a good job at just making like fun movies. Not great movies, but fun movies. Shazam yeah. was a fun movie, Black Adam was a fun movie. I think so. I think um, I think The Rock. You can tell that The Rock had a heavy hand in this because there's a lot of like The Rock being The Rock, which it's I love. I love The Rock. It's generally. a very Rock movie. <laughs> yeah, The Rock w jumping around, <laughs> punching different stuff. You know how The Rock gets. Yeah. So, did you like The Rock's performance as Black Adam? I, you know, I did. There were points where it was like, okay, because you know people would say things to him. They'd be like, Hey, The Rock, we should go over here and do this. And he would go, I'm not going over there, and I will not do this. And it's like, okay, man, you're now you're just being a fourth grader. Like, what are you? But I did enjoy, he, he is charismatic. The Rock is a very charismatic man. Yeah. Really carried off in there. Well, if you didn't think it was great, who do you think should have played Black Adam? Like, who would have been your fan casting? Um, well, I mean, for one, Danny DeVito could have done a great job. But, you know, other than that, other him aside, I do think I would get Vin Diesel in there. They're the same person, kind of, maybe. I don't know. I think The Rock was kind of the person. He's been the person for 15 years since yeah. this movie's been in development, so... I agree. So, what, what do you think of um? What do you think of the other actors in the film? Um. Well, I thought that Noah Centineo was very nice as a Adam Smasher type, in that he was Adam Smasher. Um, you know, with his growing, and he's like, oh, I'm not sure about it, because you know, he's not. He's kind of new at the superhero business. Yeah. Thought he was a good job. Good. He's a good. He was a good actor. I, I'm not normally a big Noah Centineo fan, so this, this really turned it around for me. Yeah. Well, there were other actors in the film. I thought Aldous Hodge did a great job. Right. <laughs> 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 Not just Noah Centineo. 
So what did you think of just like the acting as a whole, not just um, Noah Centennial <laughs> and The Rock? <laughs> I was going to go, for the record, I was going to go actor by actor. Um, I thought Hawkman, very well done. Dr. Fate, also very well done. Definitely could have used more writing on who those people were because it's just kind of... Yeah, especially for like non-big DC fans. Like you probably know who they are, but yeah. you probably don't know a lot about them. And again, like going into it, you're probably just like, like I don't really know much about them. Like I maybe know their names. I've seen them like once or twice. Yeah. But like, I, I didn't think they did a great job introducing them. Right. Well, it's like the Suicide Squad, the first one, the worst one, where it's like, uh, look, it's Kata God, watch out for Katana. She has a sword that can take people's souls. That's all they say. It was almost like that. It's like, that's Doctor Fate. Touch his helmet and you die. All right. And that was all that was really said about him. Like I really could have. Use like me. I know there is comics. No one's gonna buy the comics that are like, ooh, what happened before this? No one cares. Make a movie about it and then introduce them. I agree. <laughs> I li I like that take. So, if you c if you could change anything about, like, what happened in the movie, like, what would you have changed? Like, what was your biggest problem with the movie? Well, I think it's pretty evident through the whole movie that it's been going through rewrite after rewrite for about yeah, 15 Yeah, so it's years. been in production for a very it's, long it's, time. It's, it's, it's like, there's some stuff that doesn't make sense. For one, the crown is all over the place. And then, like, I feel like the only read I ever get you know where the crown is is every so often they'll go, they'll, like, check and they go, where's the crown? It's like, it's in this backpack. Okay, and then they keep going. Like, it's like, it just kind of is whatever it needs to be, which, yeah. MacGuffin. That's what it is. But, you know, I feel like they could have definitely... I don't know what they could have done. But the, 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 the crown thing was a little iffy for me. So, the thing that I'm gonna... The, th the one thing that I had a problem with was honestly the villain. So, well, the whole time the guy's acting shady, so you know he's up yeah. to something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then, it's just like kind of out of nowhere. He's like, oh yeah, I was the descendant of uh. the, the king from like thousands of years ago. So, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm... So, it was just kind of like... It feels like they didn't do a great job developing the villain. He's definitely going to be one of the more forgettable villains yeah, in no, superhero absolutely. movies. Yeah. Like, ask anybody, like, three years from now who is the villain in Black Adam. They're going to be like, they're going to have to take a little bit of time to think about it. Like, if you ask me who the villain in Black Adam <laughs> was, like, Sabah. a few days after watching it, I'm like, uh, hang on, you got to give me a second. It's so I, did, I didn't think they did a great job with the villains. Well, one of the guys I was watching it with, he looked at the villain and he was like, oh, he's an injustice. And no, he's not. He has confused him with another DC character. That's how un unrecognizable... That person was, and I know people aren't big comic fans, but it's kind of an obscure character, Sabak. That's his name, I think. He's just like a big devil guy, and there's a lot of those going around these days. So who's to say who it was? I did enjoy how the how um his death was handled, where he was like just kind of. Oh, that was that was good. You solid. don't usually. It was more of a gruesome death for a superhero really? movie. Like. I thought he was just gonna die in a big beam of light, but no, he he was. Yeah, ripped in half. Split. Yeah. He was he was given the old the the old. So, I have a question. So, mm -hmm. throughout the whole movie, you have Hawkman and Black Adam feuding over, like, their, their thoughts on how to handle things. Whose side would you take in that situation? Well, for one, Black Adam's side is just kind of, I'm Black Adam, and I'm going to do what I want. And all, but, So, I don't agree with that. But I also don't agree with Hawkman being like, heroes don't kill people. Yes, they do. All the time. Superman kills people. He killed thousands of people in Metropolis. Batman uses a gun. Was... Was... Aquaman drowns people in submarines. Everyone, Wonder Woman slaughtering people. I mean, it's World War One. That's fine. But you know, everyone kills everyone. It's all the time. There's never been someone who's like, I'm not gonna kill anybody in the DC EU at least. So whose side would you take then? I'm not gonna. You know, I'm gonna take no one's side because I think they're both just kind of like they're just they're both just being silly silly gang silly guys who are just fighting each other so often. Yeah, I do think that they didn't. Um I thought it was a pretty bad idea for them to just like go in there and try to capture him immediately before talking to him. That was really. Uh, why do they want like him to the, kneel? And also, like the communication in the like movie is just very frustrating. Like I know, like that's kind of supposed to be the point right, that like both right. them are flawed characters. But it, so if that was their plan to get me frustrated, then they right. did a great job. Well, half of DC's plots are like these pe two people aren't going to talk and are instead oh, yeah. just going to punch each other for a while and then talk and be like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have been punching each other this yeah. whole time. So you know, you got to kind of accept that after a while, I suppose. Um, what did you think about uh, Pierce Brosnan? Do you think he did a good job? I like Pierce Brosnan. He's very smooth, very suave. Yeah. You, I never have a problem with Pierce Brosnan in the movie. Just very, very cool. Yes, I loved his robe. He had this long flowing robe. He wore one of those scenes and I was like, that's a nice robe. Never came up again. It wasn't like a plot point, but I just thought it was a nice robe. Yeah, you know, I just, 
Yes. Love it. Love robes. And speaking of the costumes, I do think the costumes were very, very well designed. I think DC yes. has had some very, very good costumes over the years, and this does not disappoint. I, I completely agree. I thought, again, Hawkman looked really cool. Doctor Fate looked pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, but, you know, Adam Smasher was just Deadpool, though. Like, you look at the Adam Smasher was Deadpool. like, oh, they definitely did. I could see that he was, like, the same, like, um, like CGI yeah, tricks that they did. He also had, like, the, the diamonds over the eye. It was, like, a mask and, like, you know, the, the white yeah. eyes, and they had diamonds over it. Was like a mix of, like, it was, like, a mix of, like, Deadpool and Ant-Man. Yeah. And then he's, like, he's like, oh, I'm big, and I'm falling over every time. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> So, with all these hypothetical questions out of the way, what did you think of the soundtrack slash score? I thought it was great. I thought it was, like, it gave, a, a good soundtrack for me gives me, like, goosebumps every time. And, like, when, the, when at the beginning, when, like, you know, they, they're in the temple and there's just, he's just sitting there with the hood over his head and they're like, what's this guy doing? With, and they're, like, pointing the guns at him and going, bo, 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 and I'm like, ooh, and, like, it, and, like, and, like, starts just doing his little, his things, he's shooting people with, I'm getting off the point. The point is, it like really kind of like sends like a kind of a bone chilling thing. It's not like a heroic thing. It's like just power. And then also you have like the soundtrack with very different songs like "Paint It Black" by the Rolling Stones and "Power" by Kanye West. Absolutely. So what do you think of what do you think of their inclusion of that? Well, I think that for one, I could it was cool because they kind of like phased in "Paint It Black" in a way at, at the beginning of the scene because like they were like kind of playing little motifs of it. And I was like, oh, this kind of sounds like "Paint It Black." And they started playing the actual song, and it was a different. It was a payoff to my heart. Yeah. Well. Here's the other thing. The writing in this movie was very cheesy. What, what, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Was it too cheesy? It was a little cheesy. It was a, uh, it was a tad too cheesy, I would say, at some points. But I like a good amount of cheese in my films. Um, for one, I liked I liked the whole set, tell, the, tell the man in black, tell them the man in black sent you. I liked when he said that. And he was falling. He's like, tell them in like that. That's fun. That's a fun little thing. What about you? What do you think? I didn't hate it. Again, it's a DC superhero movie. Like, it's kind of gone to the point where maybe it's like getting more unfair because I feel like the movie's been getting better. But everyone kind of has that perception that like Marvel, like, because well, they are. But Marvel movies are superior to DC movies. Right. And DC movies are more of like just like the fun cheesy movies yeah. that aren't going to be great. And then Marvel actually put out like good superhero movies. Right. Right. But again, I'm I'm never. I'm never a big hater on um, cheesy movies and cheesy like um, dialogue, so I thought I liked it. No, and again, you know what you're getting with The Rock. Like, I don't think you're ever going into a movie, at least now. But The Rock is not really known for his range as an actor. So no, when you when not. you get a movie, if you if you get a movie with The Rock, you're gonna know what you're gonna get. It's like yes, cheesy, absolutely. macho dialogue. Well, uh, well, it's a separate, separate, completely separate question. Why didn't the Watt family go? Hey, stop breaking our walls. He broke like all their walls. All their walls are gone. Yeah, well, the guy's pretty dangerous. He had just woken up. I don't really think you want to start an argument with him about breaking walls. They're like, oh, it's Black Adam. There goes our wall. Well, yeah, but it's like when the guy can, like, kill you in a second and he just, and, like, you just watched him kill, like, 30 people. Like, I think once he wakes up and he's, like, destroying, destroying stuff in your house, I don't think your big thing is, like, hey, stop breaking that wall. Well, on that subject, I do enjoy how it was, like, he was, like, he said such little, like, regard for humanity at that point. Like, he was just floating everywhere. He's, like, I liked him. He, like, wouldn't even walk. He just kind of hover places. And there's that one scene where the kid's running down the stairs trying to talk to him, and he's just kind of hovering down very slowly as I, if he's I going thought that was, the I stairs. thought that was pretty. I thought that was pretty clever. I liked that. I liked that. that. I enjoyed that. That was fun for me to watch. So I remember we were talking before the review. You had a, a big point that you wanted to bring up. Yeah, well, I think. I think it's really cool. Because, you know, for a while, the DC Universe, there, it's been all over the place. We don't know if anything's connected. Yeah. Superman won't show his face. But then with this, you got, you, got, you got people from the show Peacemaker. You got, you got the wizard from Shazam. With the beard, and he's like, "Ooh, Shazam! You got, you gotta have your power." And here's the Shazam. You got those people, and then post-credit scene, which not even really a twist, because everyone knew about it, because The Rock just w looked at people and was like, "Hey, Superman's in this." He came in, and it's like it's unifying it, and there's direction again. Like you can tell they're trying to build something for once, which I think is fun. You really like to see it because, again, like we throughout the DC universe, which has been going on since 2013 with Man of Steel, it's like so much actor turnover. So you have Ben Affleck as Batman. 
then Ben Affleck's not Batman. And then another Batman movie gets released, but then Ben Affleck's back as Batman. And then we're not even going to get into the whole Ezra Miller saga right now, yeah. but it's just like, it feels like all the movies, like Suicide Squad gets remade. And like, you really just like, it's, yeah, I know. I and I really like how they're kind of building a universe now. And like, it's not as confusing if you're like, are these movies separate? Are these movies in the universe? Every time they say there's a new Batman, I just cry a little more because I don't know what to think. Yeah. I know. The, the night's spent crying in my room about all the yeah, Batman movies. Yeah, they keep finding me in the closet. They're like, what's wrong, Truman? I'm like, a new Batman. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what did you think about, you know, Black Adam? A very kind of macho person. What do you think about the human characters who are kind of there to ground them a little bit? What did you think of them? I liked them. Again, I think it's probably pretty forgettable in the long run, like um, the mother and the son who are with Black Adam the whole time. I, again, I think they'll probably just be pretty forgettable. But it, like Black Adam is not supposed to be, I don't think, a major movie in the DC cinematic universe. So, yeah. Well, what do you think? I, you know, I thought they were well included. I think in most movies, I would kind of not enjoy the parts of them because it's like they're taken away from the superhero portion of it. But I think they were well used. I think they were, they were in there a little bit. They were in there to remind us, hey, the crown's over here, and we we're like, okay, cool, back to the Black Adam part. Um, yeah, I think it was a nice inclusion. Although, I disagree with you. I think this is meant to be, like, the big cornerstone of the new DC. Because the Rockies were going like, this is phase one. We're restarting again. I think he, it might not be what he wants it to be, but he seems like he would love it. Well, The Rock always likes to blow stuff out of proportion. Right. <laughs> the Rock is a great promoter. Yeah. Which he well, probably got from the wrestling business. Yeah. But it's like, he, he's always plugging his stuff and making it bigger than it probably is. Like, you'd think that Terramana tequila is probably, like, the biggest brand of tequila on the market, <laughs> based on how much he Well, uh, it. yeah. Well, there is a kind of a sense, like, well, with the Superman post credit scenes, which yes. the most, perhaps the most cliche post credit scene I've ever seen, where he literally flies down and goes, hey, we should talk. Like, what? We should talk. We should talk. Like, what do you mean we should? We, I guess you can't say we should fight, but, you know, we can talk. I did enjoy that, though. I do think they're probably trying to set up a Superman versus Black Adam. Which, yeah. What do you think about that? I think that'd be really cool. Again, I'm glad Henry Cavill's back because for a little bit, it's right. like Henry Cavill's no longer Superman. And I think Henry Cavill's the perfect Superman. He looks like him. He's a great performance. It's just he's the perfect Superman. It's kind of like um, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Right. It's just like the yeah. cast. Like It's perfect casting. So I think that'll be great. And again, The Rock, while I think he's cheesy, he's super entertaining. It, sh it should be really fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do think what's probably going to happen, which is never they've never done before in DC movies, they're probably going to fight initially, but then team up to fight some greater evil. I hope they do that because you know we've never really never seen that before. Oh yeah, never. No, that never happens. <laughs> but um, I really wish so with, more. with Amanda Waller in the movie, a good amount. Do you think Black Adam will ever cross paths with the Suicide Squad? Um, perhaps I could see him because he's kind of like an anti-hero type. Although he is just a hero, he keeps saying he's not a hero, but he, he saves people pretty regularly in this film. Out of the gate, he saved that lady. Yeah. Why'd he save the lady? He killed everyone in that tomb, except for he was like, I like you, and then he didn't kill her. Like, what? Yeah. I don't understand. But um, I do think they could cross over. Because I think Amanda Waller, maybe she's going to be the new Nick Fury. We don't know what she's going to be. Ama Amanda Waller's the worst. I really hope she's not, because she's just such an unlikable character. I think she's supposed to be like that, though. Well, I know, but it's I'm just fun. saying, like, I, it is fun, but I'm just saying I don't think that's, like, the new Nick Fury. <laughs> She could, I, I mean, well, you could do a th you. I, I, w I would not be surprised if they tried to do a Justice Society versus Justice League type thing where it's Amanda Waller kind of running that side and then, like, Superman being like, you're not good, Amanda Waller. I'm just dip on here. Call me, DC. I can write. Um, but, you know, I could definitely see that happening in the future. Again, it's very promising to see kind of something being built forwards for once since they were just kind of doing scattered movies all over the place for a while. Yeah, well, I really hope DC calls you sometimes. You seem to have some great ideas. Oh, well, thanks. So, what would you rate this movie out of 10? I, no, I think I would give this movie a 7. And I know my, well, some people, Rotten Tomatoes might disagree with me, but I really think it was, a, it was an enjoyable film for me. I had a good time. Yeah. Well, I'm going to agree. I'm going to give it, like, a 7.5 to an 8 out of 10. It's a fun movie. And, like, again, as you talked about, Rotten Tomatoes might not agree with you, but as you can see, the audience score from what The Rock shows, like, on his Instagram 24-7, <laughs> it's, like, an 85 to a 90. So the audience is enjoying it. And, again, like, I don't think it's really a movie made for the critics. Like, oh. this movie's not looking to <laughs> win, like, Best Picture. <laughs> not even, like, 50th Best Picture of the Year. But, um, <laughs> but like, it's a fun movie. You have Black a good Adam time watching not it. It's going to be directed by Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Unfortunately. So. Yeah. And with that, let's go to commercial break.
Welcome back to Review Crew. On today's episode, we're going to review everything, everywhere, all at once. Here's a trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Let's talk about this movie now. Let's, let's talk about it. I liked it a lot. I love Kick-Ass. There are parts of me that want to just go through frame by frame and see every single multiverse when they'd have those yeah, flashes. Yeah, the big scenes. flashes. I, me too. Talented, funny, handsome. Oh. Tim, Come on. you got it all, buddy. You're like my own person. Look who's talking. Kid. Come on. See you next week. Now we're going to take it on over to our on-the-spot correspondents, Roman and Dylan, who are reviewing Freddy vs. Jason. Welcome back to Review Crew. I'm Dylan. Okay. Uh, and we are reviewing Freddy vs. Jason. Let's check out the trailer. I think uh, we actually need you to take the mask off for the review. I'll talk, but the mask stays on. Fair enough. All right. So, Freddy vs. Jason. This is uh, kind of a, an oddball of a film. So, this, you know, kind of matches Freddy and Jason up. It delivers on that, but it also has <laughs> a lot, a lot of other things going on. Yeah, there's, this is... Um... You know, you can say this about a lot of movies, and people do, it's kind of a cliche, but this really is a movie that we just don't see anymore. Yeah. We don't get, they don't make them like this anymore. Um, that might be for the better, but. It really is a product of its time. It really sure. is a product of its time, but man, is it enjoyable to just turn your brain off and watch. I, mean, I just, I want to say right now, I don't think any of the characters in this movie other than Freddie or Jason are enjoyable whatsoever, I think. I, I, like, I like Kelly Rowan. Okay, Kelly Rowan is pretty solid, but. There are a lot of disposable characters. They honestly are just victims. But yeah. I don't really care because I, when I watch this movie, at least, I watch it to see Freddy fight Jason. So. Yeah, Freddy and Jason. And it really does deliver on that. There are some pretty dope fights. I think every time they interact, it's, like, pretty perfect. You know, no complaints there. It's very violent, very bloody. Yeah, you know? so, you know, if you haven't seen this movie, you might be kind of wondering, you know, why are Freddy and Jason going to fight? And if you have seen this movie, you might be wondering why are Freddy and Jason fought? Because they don't, like, really... Yeah, they don't really... <laughs> they don't it doesn't really, really fully explain, explain why, you know, they have to fight <laughs> at just, all. They just are. They just, you know, it's just like... It's weird because the ending of the movie kind of does a 180 and kind of, like, I don't want to say humanizes Jason, but, like, kind of gives him a bit of, like, a heroic arc. So it's, Yeah, despite being, yeah. like, one of the most brutal murderers, like, ever. Yeah, he kind of ends the movie as the hero. As, yeah, you're rooting for Jason. Um, it's... This but to be experience. fair, Jason can't talk, and this movie, Freddy can, you know, we, we know Freddy can talk. Freddy can talk, and oh boy does he say some he stuff. He says some stuff in this movie. That would not be, be I uh, think that goes back to your original, original, your original point. <laughs> it, yeah, this is not a movie that would really fly, just, just based off of what Freddy says in this movie. Like, it's Oh, just, yeah. And another thing is, like, I feel like we don't get as many horror movies like this where the focus is just so not on the horror. Yeah. Like, this movie is not scary. Not at all. You will not be scared at any point during and this I, movie. I think there, there are jump scares, but, like, none of them are effective. None like, of them were. One of the jump scares in this movie literally has a guy waking up from a nap and then his dad's head just falls off next to him. <laughs> Literally, like, yeah, like yeah. it was staged for his dad's head to just, to just fall, fall off right when he woke up from a nap. And then Jason just appears and slashes him in half. It's it's just stupid fun. Like it's just ridiculous. It like, but I love it. I mean, I, I really love every every part of this movie. There's some 
There's some great kills in this movie too. Like, there are some good. There are some really good kills. I, I think. I think Jason has better kills than Freddy. He, he definitely. I think by default, just he, he has a lot more. I want to say. I yeah, think. yeah. And that's that's worth. That's fair because like Jason is much different. Like he kills in like groups of people. Freddy kind of goes like one at a time kind of thing. So yeah, it's he's like, a little bit of a psychological terror. Yeah, like, he Jason likes to torture just... people. Jason doesn't really care. He's got one goal, and that is to kill. So well, kill, kill. Yeah. I mean, and he... then when they finally do collide in the third act, it's just it's pretty epic. It's pretty sick. It's yeah. Pretty sick. Yeah, the final fight between them is, is is cartoonish, but oh man, it's awesome. It's also so bloody. It's, it's so bloody. It's so just, like pulling each other's arms it's off. So, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And like every time like Freddy or Jason gets hit, they get flung like a power yeah, ranger. Literally, yeah, literally. <laughs> like they, they, there's so many shots of Freddy <laughs> being thrown through the air where his arms are like. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> actually, I literally think in a span of ten minutes there are four shots of Freddy getting thrown. Just a hundred feet. Like, yeah. Every time he does that, it really reminds me <laughs> of Power Rangers. That Power Rangers like yeah, arm like yeah, yeah. like this. He's getting like it's, hurled through the air. It's a, it's such a ridiculous movie to an extent where it's just like I, I don't even I, I wouldn't call it good, but I wouldn't call it bad either. It's I really, wouldn't call it good. I wouldn't call it good. There's no way you could call it good, but I wouldn't call it bad because I just I, it puts a smile on my face every time I watch it. I mean, you just if you if you like really tropey two thousands things, yeah. This is a movie for you. I mean, this is one of the most two thousand, like early two thousands piece of media you're going to see. Like for sure, just every character is such a cliche. Like there's a scene mm -hmm. in the beginning where you have some like high school like football like jocks, and just the way they talk, like the way their dialogue is, like you just know even before there's anything scary in this movie, you're like, oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be one of those movies yeah, like where it's just nothing is. You know, not it's very original. It's very, very cliche. Yeah, it is very well, it's cliche. Just, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You know, you just, you know, you're watching this because you want to see some teenagers get killed by some horror movie icons. Yeah, and you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot of you're dead get kids. That. And I, I think I was telling you before the show even started that this was supposed to be Freddy versus Jason versus Ash originally. Yeah, which I think would have been is honestly a missed opportunity. I think that would have been sick. I think that would have been great. Yeah, um, I think that would have been been a ton of fun to have all three of them. But I'm also kind of glad we have a movie that's I'm, just Freddy and Jason. I'm totally content just seeing Freddy and Jason, to, you know, dash it out. You know, one thing that did bother me a little bit during this movie, not major, obviously, was I never felt like I fully understood like what. Freddy's powers actually are it's and also I mean I think my biggest gripe with the movie is they give Jason a weakness in this film that makes zero sense it, yeah. really, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever just any Friday the 13th then could tell you it doesn't make any sense so I look past it but it, it's literally just ridiculous yeah that's pretty <laughs> ridiculous all right so we give this a give this a rating I think it's really hard to but I'm gonna give it a five out of ten. That's not to say it's bad. I think it's a very enjoyable watch, but it is not a good movie at the end of the day. I think five out of ten is the perfect rating for this. Uh, yeah. you, you read my mind on there. You know, makes sense. You're Freddy. Yeah, you super, probably got right in there. Super fun. <laughs> super super <laughs> fun late night watch, but you know. Yeah, super fun late night watch. You're gonna enjoy this with your friends. Unless they, you know, unless they don't like it for some of the dated elements, in which case they're right, they're right to feel that way. But yeah, um, I think at the end of the day, perfect for the Halloween season. Check out Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. Now let's kick it on back to the studio. That on the spot was crazy, but you know what's even crazier is the credits of this show. Let's go take a look. <laughs> 